Okay, the uh, second part dealing with solving uh, quadratic equations is going to involve what we call the quadratic formula. Um, <coughs> often when we have a situation like this where there's some uh, trinomial that's set equal to zero, we can solve that by factoring as we discussed the last time. However, there's one problem with <coughs> these types of equations is that uh, they're not always factorable. So if they're not factorable, then factoring is not an option. So therefore we have the second option, which is to use the quadratic formula. <coughs> And so if we have anything that's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, knowing that a and b and c are the coefficients, okay, then what we can do is we can plug them into this formula and simplify, and we'll get either two answers or one answer if this part is zero. Um, but bottom line is if we put them in here properly and do the math in the correct order, okay, we can certainly get the two answers that we're looking for. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, an example here. We, uh, do it in steps here if we identify the a, b, and c. And you may or may not need to be able to need to write those down, but ultimately you can if you want to, it's up to you. Okay. And then if we <coughs> take the formula as such and we fill in the blanks, and again knowing that our a, b, and c are 2, 9, and negative 5. And if we plug in our 2, 9, and negative 5, and also 2 on the bottom there. Then the simplifying part, what I would do first is I would handle the stuff that's underneath the radical first. So if we do the squared and we do the multiplication, one thing I would always add to this too is I always put parentheses around the 4AC part just to make sure I'm clear that if I'm subtracting here that I need to do the multiplying first and then subtract the result. So therefore this is going to be 81 minus whatever this is in the parentheses, and in this case it's negative 40. So it's going to be 81 plus 40. So if we do all that correctly, and then we add that together, we get negative 9 plus and minus radical 121 over 4. Now, the key issue with making sure that we finish this right, okay, that part is just simplifying the stuff that's underneath the radical and also simplifying the 2a part. Okay. What we also have to check is, is there anything that can be done with that? Okay. Well, if it's a perfect square, then great. Then that's just going to become a whole number. If it's not a perfect square, then we can simplify the radical by seeing if it has any perfect square factors. Okay. All right. So in this particular case, it turns out to be a whole number. It turns out to be 11, which is great. Okay. And so our two answers are right here, but they are not simplified. They need to be simplified. We need to handle this plus and minus part. So we'll do these as two separate problems. Negative 9 plus 11 divided by 4, or negative 9 minus 11 divided by 4. And if we do the math on both of those, we wind up with 2 on top, 4 on the bottom, or 1 half is one of our answers. And in this case, we get negative 20 on top, divided by 4 would be negative 5. So again, our two answers here would be either 1 half, or, remember, or here is a key word when we find two answers here, the two solutions are 1 half or negative 5. So that one turned out nice <coughs> because the radical part ended up being a perfect square. And there's another thing that uh, we, we could have known by doing that. If we had just calculated the b squared minus 4ac part and we got a perfect square, okay, that would have told us that this thing was also factorable. Okay. So if they tell us to use the quadratic formula, then we have no choice. We have to use it. But if it was our own choice, okay, we might want to just do the b squared minus 4ac part first. And if it's a perfect square, then we know it's factorable. So you can do it the factoring way instead. So it's up to you on which way you do it if it's, it says solve. All right. <coughs> Let's take a look at another one. We have this one says 2x squared equals 4x plus 1. Just like before, we need to get everything on the same side so we can identify the a, b, and c. So we'll move everything over to the left. Uh, move all terms to the left, I guess. Not the right over here. Um, identify the a, the b, and the c. Get everything set on one side, zero on the other. Okay, and then this time when we use the quadratic formula, I notice that once again, I would, if it were me, put that in parentheses so I make sure I don't mess up the subtraction part. Okay. And if I do that, 16 minus negative 8, I get radical 24. Now, the difference in this one is that the 24 is not a perfect square. However, <coughs> okay, we know that with 24, we could write that as 4 and 6. If we did it as 4 and 6, that would become 2 radical 6. So if it's reducible, then we need to reduce it. So that very first step would be 
to rewrite the radical 24 as 2 radical 6. And then we may or may not be able to do one more thing. In this case, we can because if you look at all the numbers that are out, you've got a 4, a 2, and a 4. Okay, all those have a common factor. Okay, so all those can be divided by, in this case, 2. And we get 2, 1, and 2. And so our final answer would be that. Okay, you don't need to necessarily write them as two separate. You can just leave it as 2 plus and minus radical 6 over 2. If you want to write them separate, you can also. Okay. But you can just leave it like that because that represents both answers to this question. Um, one thing to note over here on the left, too, is this could happen also. If the expression under the square root simplifies to a negative number, say for argument's sake we had gotten negative 24 here, okay, then the quadratic equation has no real solutions, and we would just stop. Okay. Now, <coughs> since we already passed advanced algebra, we know that we can do something with negatives under the radical. In, in this particular class, though, we're just going to leave it as no real solutions. We're not going to get into imaginary numbers in this class. All right. Questions on that one. All right. <clears throat> one other thing I want to talk about here is that uh, a lot of things that are in real life uh, lead us to quadratic equations. Like in this particular case, we have this uh, blood pressure um, relative to age, and this is a uh, this is the one for men. There's one for women here. You can see the graphs for men and women. So it says find the age to the nearest uh, year where a man would have a blood pressure of 125. So if we put 125 in here, you notice that we have a quadratic equation to solve. Okay. Now, if you look at the, uh, there's a couple ways we can solve this. Okay. We can get everything on the same side and we can use the quadratic formula. This one doesn't look like a very good one to factor because of the numbers are not very nice. Okay. So we could use the quadratic formula though, that would be fine. If we have a graph of this, if we drew the graph, we could find the men's curve, which is this darker one. Okay, and if we find 125 over here, okay, we can estimate the answer okay, right here. It looks like it's about age what? Looks like it's about age 30. So we could estimate it from a graph. Okay. Or, like I said, we could use the quadratic formula and okay, get everything on the same side and then use our A, B, and C. So we got some, uh, you know, a little bit messier numbers to deal with because they're decimals. But bottom line, it's the same exact procedure. It turns out to be negative 27 and positive 31. And again, which one of these is the only reasonable one for an age for a person? Yeah, the 31 is the only one, it's approximately 31. Okay. Um, the other uh, <coughs> thing that we can do is we can use a graphing calculator to do it graphically as well. So another good way to solve a, a quadratic equation, or any equation for that matter, is to take the two curves, we got 125 on this side, and we got the quadratic on that side. Okay, bottom line is we just need to know okay, when are those two equal to each other. Okay, so like uh, for instance, if you take the ACT test, you've already taken it once, but if you take it again, okay, and you have this equation on here, and you say, well, I don't remember how to solve a quadratic equation. Well, you don't need to. It's a multiple choice test, and you got a graphing calculator. Okay, all you need to do is go ahead and put your uh, y equals, if you do 125 and you do your 0.006x squared minus 0.02x plus 120 on there, and you get a proper window. And the window here, <coughs> we know that in the x direction, we know the answer already is 31. If I go 0 to 40, I'd be able to see that 31 in there. Um, if you didn't know, you might have to adjust the x window a little bit, but we know the y window has to be at least 125 because the graph of this is just 125, which is the horizontal line. So I'll say we go up to 150 by tens. And we hit graph, there's our 125 going across. And there's our curve. And you can see that there's an intersection right there. And we might want to, just so we can see it a little better, we might want to change the window from, uh, from 0 to 150 to, let's say, 100 to 150. See that intersection a little bit better. And one thing nice about the graphing calculator is you have a, <coughs> under the calc menu up here, under above your trace, second calc, got your intersection command, number five. If you move the cursor over by the intersection point and hit enter three times, it will solve the equation for you. So therefore, 30.58, 2253.
And again, if we round it to the nearest whole number, that would be 31, just like we saw in the quadratic formula. Okay. So again, one thing nice about having a graphing calculator is that you can, you know, even if you don't know how to do the algebra to solve it, you don't know how to use the quadratic formula, don't know how to factor it, can you still find an answer? Absolutely. Okay, so the second part of our assignment is going to be working with uh, the quadratic formula. Practice using uh, that technique, or those both techniques that I just showed you.